All right, so conclusions of the German test report. In sum, all enemy aircraft are inferior to the German counterparts, especially the Spitfire has poor yaw and pitch control. The weapon placement on the wings have the known disadvantages. Well, that's incredibly on brand for the Germans. Let's get into this. This video is sponsored by Rekwatches. So how do we rate or compare aircraft? Well, by convention, this is often done by looking at the broad statistics or you know the paper stats and make the conclusions from there. And while that is a clean approach in theory, there are a lot of issues attached with that. Crucially, this top trump approach is devoid of any context. And it really doesn't tell us anything about what the Luftwaffe or the Luftwaffe pilots thought about the Spitfire. So instead of doing that, I will put the lens squarely on the Germans for now. First, I will show you data or rather conclusions from a German technical evaluation of a Spitfire that I found in the German military archives. And then I want to talk about the Luftwaffe pilots, their perceptions, what it tells us and why this is sometimes very different from what we are hearing. Joining me for this part are also two accomplished historians that have interviewed Luftwaffe air crews in the past, James Holland and Dr. Jens Wehner, to give you an even larger pool of insights to draw upon. Of course, I can visit archives and publish this sort of research because of you, and especially here a big thank you to the patrons and channel members who support the channel. So let's start with the technical evaluation that I found in the files from the German military archive. The first one is an evaluation of a Spitfire Mark 1 and 2. As we get into it, quick disclaimer right here, and let's go, starting with the comparison. For performance, the German test states that the B-109E is superior in speed and climb. And a shallow climb with speeds of 280 to 300 km per hour is noticed as optimal against a Spitfire. The 109 is considered superior in roll at higher speeds, while quick changes in the pitch axis cause the Spitfire to be unstable in the yaw axis. The test then recommends the following. A warning must be issued to engage in a turn find with the enemy fighters as they have significantly tighter turning radii and times. An attack on the enemy and disengagement can therefore only be done due to superior performance. During a sudden dive, the carburetor of the enemy fighter will briefly stop due to the negative G acceleration. This measure is highly recommended. This of course refers to the fact that the Germans use direct fuel injection at this point in time, whereas British engines still, still relied on gravity-fed carburetors. If you're interested in that topic and why Britain didn't yet use fuel injection, I highly recommend this video right here. And that leads to the conclusion I read out at the start of the video. Moving on now to the second report. The second report is based on a suspected recon Spitfire that crash landed and burned up in the south of Germany. And this 100 page report has highly detailed technical analysis, but little in terms of direct comparison or statements by pilots. But after going through 100 pages, what I have found is this. From the enemy fighters that have appeared in operational use, the Spitfire demonstrates the best performance due to its speed, firepower and flight characteristics. For our aircraft, it is an enemy that is to be reckoned with. Pilots who flew the Wingmish fighter negatively rated the low longitudinal stability but emphasized its maneuverability. Takeoff and landing do not present any issue. No danger or stalling characteristics were recorded. Now this is data we can use, but for the reasons given in the disclaimer and some additional ones, they are certainly not the end or be all. So now let's really home in on what the pilots, the Luftwaffe pilots, had to say. Sometimes there's a tendency to take the statements of one single pilot and use that as if it is a definitive, universally applying oracle of truth that simply cannot be questioned. And the whole thing, for example, with Galland joking or annoying Goering, depending on what version you like, uh, with his Spitfire statement here springs to mind. Now I had to bring it up at some point because I know someone will, as if this one statement actually matters. It doesn't. Basically, a statement of a single pilot is generally worthless as a measurement because it is based on the perception of that single pilot. If it was a bad pilot, then he may rate the enemy machine more highly. If it was a very skilled pilot or an ace, he may dismiss the enemy plane and not account for the fact that the average pilot won't be as successful or proficient in dogfighting. So what we really should be looking at for is 
asking as many pilots as possible to determine an overall average. Here is data from a German Jagdgeschwader, Erste Gruppe Jagdgeschwader 53. At the start of the war, some of the kill claims pilots had to hand in required them to rate the enemy aircraft in terms of speed, maneuverability and firepower. From six cases, the Spitfire was rated as the following. It was rated equal in speed five times and it was rated good or better four times compared to the 109 in terms of maneuverability. So far so good, there appears to be an overall agreement. And we can start also seeing why it's important to look at the accounts of multiple pilots rather than just one. This can also be seen from the accompanying 13 reports on the Hurricane, where speed was rated inferior in six cases but equal in three cases, and maneuverability was rated superior in seven cases to the 109. So you can see that even though all of these results appear to go with the broad average of what we would consider the matchup of 109 versus Spitfire and also Hurricane would be, depending on who you ask, you will get some variance in each case. Put it bluntly, if you're asking a pilot to give his evaluation of an enemy aircraft, it does matter whether the pilot you're asking is, well, a bad pilot, an average pilot, a good pilot, or even an ace. Talking about pilots and aces here, let me introduce you to Pat Hughes, a fighter pilot who flew a Spitfire Mark I during the Battle of Britain. Now, before he was shot down in September 1940, he was in fact credited with 17 kills. And a lot of them were 109s, making him one of the leading aces of the battle. And his plane, X4009, you can in fact own a piece of it. And that's where Rec Watches comes in, today's sponsor. Now, Rec specializes in unique and limited number timepieces that include unused original parts of restoration projects. It's a fantastic concept, as every watch in the X4009 collection includes that original aluminum sheeting from the aircraft and it helps fund also the restoration project. This is a premium product. Not only will you be wearing a piece of history, literally a piece of a Spitfire that shot down multiple 109s, but you'll also support history to stay alive with the restoration. And the X4009 collection is currently in pre-order with an amazing 15% discount and only a limited number of them remain. The watches are available in three editions, Anfra Grey, Midnight Blue and Centra Black. It comes with free worldwide shipping, a 36 month warranty, and if for some unfathomable reason you want to return the watch, they do offer 30 day returns. Secure yourself the 15% pre-order discount and a unique watch with the links in the description below. So now we are starting already to get a clearer picture in terms of what Luftwaffe pilots thought on average about the Spitfire. But to talk more about the impressions of German pilots, I have invited Dr. Jens Wehner, who is also amongst those who first published some of this data in his new book. If you look at the perception of the German pilots on, on the Spitfire in the Battle of Britain, there was a very diverse perception of the Spitfire. Often it is mixed that the pilot's performance is um, included into the plane's performance. So meaning if a Spitfire was flown very well, then maybe the Luftwaffe pilots concluded, oh, the Spitfire is a very superior plane. Uh, Spitfire was seen in general as similar to the BF-109. So maybe some pilots said it was not so fast. Others said, uh, oh, the Spitfire was maybe a little bit faster. Yeah, so this was not so decisive. Secondly, of course, they all noted more or less that the Spitfire was better in terms. So this was the, I would say, if, if, if you want to look at the important factor in dogfight, then the Spitfire, it was able to turn better. So most Luftwaffe pilots recognized this. But, and there it comes to the person in itself, if you look at the fighter aces of the Luftwaffe, then of course you had some Luftwaffe fighter aces that thought about this, that maybe the Spitfire was a better turner, but they will outturn the Spitfire every time because they had the superior skills. So meaning skills were more decisive in turn than performance of the airplane, meaning you can't really tell this factor as a decisive one. There was one Luftwaffe fighter pilot, was not an ace, and he wrote after the war that he was meeting a single Spitfire over Canterbury, and the Spitfire flew with a hanging wing, so meaning I want to turn. 
and of course the Luftwaffe pilot knew, oh, I don't want to turn with the Spitfire. So there you see the Luftwaffe pilots had, were aware of the better turning performance of the Spitfire. So in general, the performance of the Spitfire, like all other fighter types of the Battle of Britain, was not so decisive at the pilot skills and the tactics that were applied in the combat. So this is this is one major reason why we won't find that much information from Luftwaffe pilots about the Spitfire. And another thing I want to add, another anecdote is that Julius Meinberg, he flew with his comrades for England and a, a single Spitfire was closing to Hans Hahn, which was a leading fighter ace at this point already and later in the war also until he was shot down. And um, Spitfire was closing and they didn't warn Han until the Spitfire was very near to the to the 109 of Han, just to make a joke out of it. And then suddenly they said, oh, there is a Spitfire and Han really pro broke away very straight and uh, the Spitfire had no chance in following. And there you see uh, that maybe it was not always the big fear of the Spitfire, let's say it like this. It really depends on the pilots and so on. Yeah. And then I also spoke with James Holland, who wrote about the Battle of Britain and who interviewed German air crews in the past. Well, I think the, um, the, the Luftwaffe fighter pilots respected the, and the air crew generally, respected the Spitfire hugely. I mean, it was an incredibly fast, highly maneuverable aircraft at the time. Um, it wasn't the equal of the Messerschmitt 109E because the Messerschmitt 109E could do the three things that you need to do in air-to-air -air combat, which is climb fast, dive fast, and pack a massive punch when you're in the combat zone. Um, the Spitfire, with its eight machine guns, and only kind of a little over 14 seconds worth of firing time, you know that was an Achilles heel, but it was incredibly maneuverable. So overall, people respect. I think they considered it more maneuverable in the combat zone than a than an ME 109E, but actual fact. A 109E could out turn a Spitfire if it really had to. Um, you lower, the, you know, you go to a certain certain speed, drop the speed enough, lower the sluts, and uh, you can actually out turn a, a, a Spitfire. But you know, only in a most skilled um, pilot could handle such a thing. So for the most part, the Spitfire was considered more maneuverable. But really, this is all about you know, you're talking about two two aircraft which are kind of you know, the equal of one another in, in combat. So really it's down to fighter skill and the circumstances in which you're engaging. You know, if your enemy has got height and the sun behind it, it's always going to have a massive advantage. Um, I do remember talking to Hans Eckhart Bob and uh, he was a very successful fighter pilot during the war and, and not least during the Battle of Britain. But, you know, he was incredibly respectful of the Spitfire. He recognized it for what it was. But again, it's not just the plane, it's the skill of the pilot. And the Hawker Hurricane was also pretty useful. Plane. I mean, it was a very stable gun platform. It had eight um, brown machine guns, just like the Spitfire. It take a lot of punishment, but its Achilles heel really um, was less its speed and agility, and more its rate of climb, which was much slower. It could only get to about 15,000 feet, or about 5,000 meters, in the same time that um, a Spitfire could do 5,000 meters, and that's just not good enough. Uh, and that's why it's really ordered to concentrate on the bombers. Uh, which are operating at lower heights while the Spitfire is get there to engage the fighters at a higher rate. And is it true that the uh, British pilots were more welcoming of the Spitfire and they really always wanted to transition to the Spitfire if they themselves were Hurricane pilots? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, the, those people who flew the Hurricane tended to defend it a little bit, but most people wanted to fly Spitfires because it's faster, it's more maneuverable, um, and it can climb faster. And nowadays, sort of, the, the Spitfire is, of course, let's say the darling of uh, the memory of the Battle of Britain and the war in itself. Um, was that already the case back then that the Spitfire had built up this reputation or did that come after the war? Yeah, I think in the Battle of Britain, the Spitfire was already the darling of the RAF. I mean, when you're looking at all the posters and stuff and the fighter boys and pictures of it, it's always Spitfires. I mean, people were proud of the Hurricane as well and, and recognized it as a kind of sturdy beast that it was. The thing about the Spitfire is when it came to the scene in 1936, it was completely brand new. There was nothing about it that had been seen before. So all every aspect of it was kind of new and sleek and feline, and it just looked a thing of beauty. Whereas the Hurricane, you can see the lineage of earlier Hawker um, biplanes, like the Nimrod and the Hart and stuff. If you look at it in profile, the, the fuselage and the tailplane are basically exactly the same. And that means it's much easier to produce in numbers quickly because you don't have to create new machine tools to build it. But when you're looking, you know, if you're a punter on the ground, a civilian on the ground, and you're seeing the Spitfire look past, how can you not be dazzled by its sheer beauty and modernity?
please do also show your appreciation to expert guest speakers in the comments as a kind word spoken is a word well received. So now the question really goes to all of you. How do you think we should rate aircraft and how do you think we should weigh the statements of single pilots or groups of pilots in this sort of discussion. Well, I look forward to seeing what you have to say and a big thank you here of course to Rekwatches for sponsoring the video. If you do want to own a piece of a Spitfire from the Battle of Britain and a fantastic timepiece do check out the pre-order with the discount. As always big thank you also to all the patrons and channel supporters and now all you legends you go out there have a great day and see you in the sky.